Hey people, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we have a fun topic I've been wanting to talk about for a while. I made a video on this a while back and I thought I would revisit this topic about tech reviews on YouTube and the oversaturation of the tech review market and how it's misleading consumers uh, leading to biased reviews and uh, customer misinformation and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. I uh, got some got some things I want to bring up. Got some rambles, um, anecdotal stuff, and yeah. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, and uh, let's uh, let's chat. So why did I talk? Why did I decide to talk about this idea specifically? And it's just the fact that I've been thinking about this a lot, discussing this with my friends, and it's just being in the overall tech sort of niche. Um, I haven't found my sub niche yet like what i want to talk about specifically on this channel yet still testing the waters and i still think that's that's completely fine i don't think you have to have it figure out um so early on but anyway the issue i'm seeing on youtube right now is just the oversaturation of the tech review market um embargo dates new products launching you know, false reviews, biased reviews especially, and I don't think that's good for consumers nowadays when making purchase decisions because a lot of the stuff you're going to be seeing is subjective and biased when it comes to reviewing a product as opposed to objective, and we'll get into like one of my favorite websites for objective reviews. So overall, like it just leads to customers not knowing what to do with their purchase decisions. And when that's the case, I think that hurts the economy. Um, it leads to deadweight loss. It leads to customers not getting enough utility from their purchases. Overall, just like hurting the overall economy. Um, so what is the issue with this embargo date that I just mentioned issue? It's basically whenever a new product launches, they put an embargo date on this, a specific timestamp on that day when uh, like reviewers are allowed to actually post their videos on it. It used to be, the whole purpose of an embargo date used to be for, for new products was like to allow newspapers to get their reviews out and like ship them out on time um, because obviously that took more time than, the, than now with the internet. You, people can just click upload and it's instantaneous, but it would allow them time to, you know, review a product and, and, and ship it out um, in the local newspaper. And now with technology, everyone just has their YouTube video that they spent no time with the device. I will mention that. Like literally no time with the device and be able to give their first impressions without barely using it. And to me, that's where the issue lies. You're getting a biased review because one, it's limited time with the device. And two, the device was sent out to them from the company itself. Now, when you think about this, Think about it like a positive reinforcement situation where a reviewer is going to subconsciously want to say good things about this device because they want to be rewarded in the future and get sent more stuff, get more brand deals, get more sponsorships, make more money. Humans are greedy. We all know that. They want to get more income in the future. Therefore, right now, they might have to put aside their objective views on a device and they might have to start spinning it a little bit in order to make the device seem better than it actually is. So is this a problem for consumers? Yes, because they're getting biased reviews from these tech YouTubers. You have to ask yourself, did these YouTubers really get a good idea of a device after only using it for a few days when it's sent out to them from this company? Even if they're not getting paid to do this review, there is a subconscious bias involved in saying the device is better than it actually is. They might only focus on the pros of the device without really mentioning any of the cons. And every device is not is is imperfect. There's nothing perfect about all technology. We all see that. There's all pain points and complaints, hence why in every Amazon review, the average score, hence they do an average, the average like score out of five stars on Amazon is never five stars. You only see that if there's a couple um, reviews, but if there's a large enough sample size, you will never ever see a five star review on a product because there's issues and people always run into issues with, with technology. So this leads me into my next point about um, how this issue is going to like just keep getting worse. 
companies are not stupid, right? Companies know how to maximize profits. And recently they've been noticing on their marketing budget, they're like, huh, let's spend less money on commercials and stuff like that because it's not leading to as much, you know, they're not getting a big enough return on their investment from just straight doing advertising. Let's do influencer marketing, which is a lot cheaper. And most of the time they just have to send them a sample unit. They don't even have to pay these influencers because they know because of that subconscious bias they'll say good stuff about their product because they want more stuff in the future they want more money in the future yada 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 it's a it's a bad um like uh what's the word i'm looking for it's a bad um sort of cycle but there's another word i can't think of loop um feedback chain it's a bad or feedback loop it's a bad feedback loop <laughs> so <laughs> so these companies are now spending and i'll share my screen on this they're now they're now spending so if you look at this chart how much do brands spend on influencer marketing like look at this it's not like i mean this is just one sort of sample this doesn't represent everything but anyway like 11 percent of brands now spend more than five hundred thousand dollars on influencer marketing so clearly um they're getting a high ROI on this. So 14% of businesses are expected to spend 50,000 and 100,000 influencer marketing this year. The number falls to 10% for influencer marketing. Marketing spends, wait, this number falls to 10% for influencer marketing, spends between 100,000 and half million. And if we look at like year over year, the research shows that the majority, 82% of businesses plan on having a dedicated budget for influencer marketing efforts in 2023. So more companies are now uh, putting their money where their mouth is and uh, actually doing this and sending products and money to influencers because they know that they can get a lot of money in return, lead to more sales because people trust they are influencers, which is not always a good thing. Um... This is up from 77% in 2022 and 45 percentage points on the 37% in 2017. And two out of every three or two thirds of businesses say they intend to increase their influencer marketing budgets this year. 50% say that they don't, uh, they do not plan to change their budgets while 11% say they're undecided. Another 7% plan to reduce their influencer marketing spend. So Two out of three say they're going to increase it. Why, you may ask? Because they make lots of money on this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. So I thought I would just like give an example of like what the saturation, saturated tech market is looking like. Just with a recent device, right? Nice recent device. Not even an iPhone. iPhones are even worse for this. But the Google Pixel Fold just came out somewhere recently. You Google this, or sorry, you YouTube this, which is owned by Google, Um you, you look this up on YouTube and it's just like, look at how many videos come out on this thing. I used to be guilty of this. Well, I'd say I'm different than most people when I'm making a purchase decision. I like to watch reviews and, and lots of videos to get a you know general understanding of the device and what people think. My mindset has shifted. It used to be I want to hear people's thoughts and average them out and then I'll get a good idea because, right, you're going to have outliers. You're going to have people say it's terrible. You're going to have people who say it's um, super amazing. There's nothing wrong with it. You want an average sort of review because that's the best estimate of what it actually is. Um, so, but now it's changed that like, I'm finding that every review is so similar. They only say positive things about the device and they don't even get into really like details about it. It's mostly just subjective, which is fine, but like subjective reviews aren't always the best thing. And that's why I recommend websites like this, rtings.com, where they actually tell you objectively what the best sort of tech is. Like for example here, what is the best TV spec wise and objectively they give scores for certain categories and they score they keep their scoring um, consistent across all devices when they review them they give an actual score they average out these scores and that's how they come up with the best devices this is all objective like there's no one sitting here who's paid by these companies to do this they go out with their own money they purchase the stuff and they 
give it a fair and accurate score so the consumer can come on here and say, hey, this is a great TV because of X, Y, and Z. They got, you know, say someone really cares about HDR movies. They go, oh, got a 9.0 score. That's really solid. Or they care about HDR gaming. They'll come on here and they'll say like, I really like this. I really care about high dynamic range in my TVs. Therefore, I'm going to go with this Samsung S9 5B OLED display um, because it objectively, not subjectively, scored really high in those categories. That makes sense to me, but a lot of consumers now with the rise of TikTok and YouTube shorts and the low attention spans, they're not going to have the time to sit here and read through all this gobbledygook. They just want a tech reviewer such as myself um, to 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 kind of like just tell them what they should know about it. And I don't think people are great these days at making up their own minds and coming to their own opinions. Um, they kind of just take the word of other people uh, who, once again, are biased. Now, do you see the issue I'm sort of like circling back to in this video? It's like, People are making poor decision making because one, they don't have the time, short attention spans, and they're just relying on people to tell them what they want to think, not they what they want to think, what they should think, as Apple likes to say. Apple likes to tell you what you need rather than you deciding what you need. So it's flooded, right? New product comes out. It's flooded. This whole YouTube space is now flooded with reviews on the Pixel. They all basically say the same thing. Um, a lot of these reviews boil down to just a couple talking points, but they just, you know, creativity is mixed in here. Nothing wrong with that. They all give their little little spin on the device, but at the end of the day, everyone's just wa watching MKBHD's videos because he gets the most. No, I'm kidding. Um, a lot <laughs> at the end of the day, like I'd say 95% of these are all biased because they're all getting the phone shipped to them from Google. Um, I'm not going to say that they're all paid by Google to review that. They have to disclose that in these videos, by the way, or else it's against the law. Um, and so you're just getting biased information from these people. And I am not a fan of that. So that's that leads me to anecdotal stories. I, for one, have been sent products, not like on this channel really, but like on Life Made Easy, I got shipped products a lot, and I would have the idea that I need to say good things about the product. Subconsciously, I would do this. I would just naturally want to say good things. A pair of cheap Chinese earbuds, I would get sent these all the time, and I would just sit there, whoops, no, lock on my face, and I would sit there, um, and just say good things about it. even though like objectively the earbuds weren't even that good also shout out bugs bunny six flags sweatshirt i would just sit there and i say good things about the the product even though it wasn't even that good because i want to like make a good impression on this company and i want to work with them in the future and i want to get more products sent to me i want to make more money because ultimately that's all humans care about these days nothing wrong with that i'm just telling it how it is so um how do you fix this how how do we fix this? I don't have a answer for this, sadly. It's just becoming so... I, I think this falls mostly on the, the consumer. I don't really... I don't blame the YouTubers for doing this because people want views. People want money. They're like, I want to be the first one to get this review out and all this stuff. And it just, like, oversaturates the YouTube tech space now. Like, it's... MKVHD's video is going to be posted at the top every single time because he has a whole team working on these reviews. And his his reviews I do like. I do like. Um, and he has mentioned he has been mostly unbiased, which I respect. But at the end of the day, if you want, like, objective reviews, you have to go to, like, websites like rtings.com and, like, read the actual scores um, that this technology is getting in, in all those subcategories. Um... So yeah, what does this leave me for my channel? I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. I don't have the answer to this stuff. It's just it's just interesting and I like talking about it. That's all. 
I think this puts more pressure on consumers to do their own research, and I don't think they want to do that. I think at the end of the day, they just want have they just want someone to tell them, here, buy this phone. Or like you walk into the store, they're like, here, buy this. It suits you best. But if the person telling you that is biased, that's an issue because they're going to be just giving you something that um, it's not that good because maybe they get paid commissions on that, like Verizon. Um all right, I think I've been rambling on enough in this video. It's been like 15 minutes long. Um, yeah, I made a video about this actually like a while back. If I just show my screen, like I actually did make a video on this, um, why tech YouTube is dying. And something I've been thinking about with my channel in regards to making tech related content. Cause I saw a bunch of videos on YouTube. I follow a bunch of tech YouTubers and that's why I make like Unwrapping success, let's go. So I was watching a bunch of these videos and they were talking about this topic as well, about how like overall like tech views on YouTube have gone down a lot drastic. So th when I said that, I don't think I fully had the big, the, f the full picture but uh, of why that was happening, maybe I say it, but the reason this is happening is because the oversaturated market and people are like, back then, okay, back then, I'm not that old, but um, back then, like when I was like middle school, high school days and I, and I was obsessed with tech, like there would only be a couple tech reviews on YouTube at a time when a new product launched. New iPhone launches, there's only a few videos. Now everyone wants to be a YouTuber. Everyone wants to make a product review video. So it's just oversaturated. And now like it's so hard to get views on tech review videos now because there's a gazillion others. And it's really hard to like add your spin to it and be more creative because like everyone like <laughs> sad to say it's like you're not always that unique there's only so much you can say about a product so mo more likely than not someone else has already said something that that you're thinking um most likely so in reality your tech review it may be fantastic but there's just so many others out there youtube can only promote a limited a number of them and put them on the home page and and in search that yours might get lost and you may never you might never get found like myself that's happened to me a lot when i review technology Stickly, and i and i and at first i didn't believe this but then i checked some of like the bigger tech channels on youtube and i noticed like, like a lot of their recent when was this video like, created pretty low in comparison to what they used to get right why tech youtube uh is a, over time. a year ago maybe there was an actual they, like decrease uh, normally got a bunch of views and they certainly stopped doing that so there, there's I, I also think that people are just getting tired of like i think people buy tech tech's gotten so good now now that like it's so much better that um, I don't think people are constantly upgrading technology anymore just because it's naturally gotten better. It lasts longer. So I think people are less inclined to go on the internet and look up reviews for such because like purchasing that sort of stuff, the frequency of it um, has gone down. There's two main issues I see right now with the tech and with making tech content overall. And what, what I like about my channel is I'm not specifically tech, like a tech reviewer. I review tech on this channel, Raya. Man, that's so backwards. <laughs> Although I do kind of agree with that still. I think, don't get me wrong. I do reviews. I like reacting to technology, especially and like really, um, I don't want to say judging it, but like telling it how it is and looking through the BS of, um, of tech reviewers. That's where I get satisfaction. Like I've seen so many videos where they start talking about a product. I don't want to point fingers here, but your average consumer does this a lot. Stop following me, camera. That's one thing that's annoying about the Insta360 link. Um, okay. No. I can't. Oh, it's following me. <laughs> it's following me. Um, you'll see that a lot where, like, they just start... <laughs> they, they start talking about a product in a video and then they're like oh this video is sponsored by the company that sent me this it's like okay now this isn't an actual tech review you're just doing an advertisement for this this company and so it just throws all the person's credibility down the drain i no longer trust a word they say because why there's money in their pockets company uh, the the company that sent them the product that money is now in their pockets therefore even if it's uh, even if it's unconscious, it's still there. Like they're still naturally going to be doing this just because of human psychology. Play. 
um, a lot of stuff. I also focus on productivity and motivation, but I don't want to be constrained to just like oh, I miss those videos making a tech review on like a mouse, for example. And I will admit, like right now, making tech reviews, in my opinion, I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have rephrased that a little bit. I'm n I'm just not good at. It. I'd say I've gotten better now. <laughs> Well, that, that's not to say I'm not like good at reviewing tech. I'm, I think I make good reviews. I don't like the process of making <laughs> the the process of making a tech review is a pain in the. You know what? Um, but if you, I mean, if you really think about it, you have to use the product for a long time. You have to purchase the product with your own money. If you're fortunate enough, you'll just get it sent to you. But then it's biased. We run into <laughs> we run into problems. All around, there's no winning here. Making tech. You know what the solution is? Stop doing YouTube reviews. The fact that I have to sit here and like use the product for a really, really long time, and then have That's exactly to kind of like consolidate my thoughts into a spreadsheet and a spreadsheet like a notes. Bunch Who of uses notes, a spreadsheet? Um, give Come my on. objective Come opinions on. and also subjective thoughts on the on the device, um, and then at the end of the day, like have to like tell you guys like should you buy this product or not? Um, it's it's a hassle and. and thing has like a really good process maybe for the future of this channel i'll be the spokesperson for uh unbiased reviews or expose the hypocrisy not hypocrisy expose the the people out there trying to make money off this stuff when in reality their pockets are lined with this with the company's uh marketing budget or influencer marketing budget sir and a lot of um, those reviewers are going to give me like good insight into the product and so this this is where um a small tech youtuber like myself and other small creators um are having issues i can no longer tell my individual story because the market is so saturated boom boom exactly scott that's a comfy jacket by the way why would someone watch my review even if my review is fantastic say the editing is amazing say geez i'm like I'm crushing it in this video. All the same points I made here. And afterwards, and the thing is, I put a This mic, to by the way, that I'm using in here is so good. I don't use it anymore because the, the battery kind of died in it. This is like a Chinese wireless dynamic microphone. Um, also, I'm using the same stand for this mic right now. This is a wireless, I forget the actual name of it. It was on Amazon. It was like so cheap too. Two of them for like 50 bucks. It's like it has a wireless receiver that plugs into your um your camera. Look listen how good this audio is and it's wireless, which is nuts. That review, I bought the product. I'd argue it's like just as good as this one and it's less money. Um none of that was Oh wait no, around this per unit it's less easy. money. I got it like on release day. I like actually drove to the store and got it on release day. Um my this is a prime example of why you can't compete with big YouTubers. I drove, this is an actual story. I drove, Jesus, podcast is 23 minutes long. I drove to the Apple store, real story, drove to the Apple store on the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro release date, which is uh, not last year in 2021, I think. I drove there to the actual store not early in the morning like later in the evening when the crowd the crowd kind of died down picked up the phone went home made a video on it immediately uploaded it like an unboxing first impressions got no views i spent a thousand dollars on an iphone 13 pro luckily it was a gift from my father and like it wasn't going to complete waste because i wasn't going to use it I just had a Galaxy S21 that I loved. I wasn't just going to like randomly switch to iPhone um, out of the blue. So luckily it was a gift, but I was also using it for a tech review just to see like, can I compete with these big YouTubers if I try to get my video up first? Answer was no. It's like, it's literally impossible. So that's why I think, I think that I need to add a twist to my channel, make myself unique and stand out, not from tech reviews, because we already, we've already like realized that's a, um, it's like a dying sort of strategy because it's so saturated right now. 
Like if I were to just sit here and make tech reviews all day, it would take me forever to grow because I would never show up in the YouTube algorithm. To me, it's like, I think it's better to make stuff I like calling out the hypocrisy. I keep saying that. It's not calling out hypocrisy, calling out the BS of other people's videos, which is also entertaining at the same time, and also making stuff that actually helps people. I think that's ultimately my, what my goal is on this channel. I just haven't figured out like what specifically I want to do with that, what actual videos I want to make. I struggle with this a lot where I'll make a uh like a notes list or a list of video ideas in my phone i'll just sit there and be like i think this will do good i'll th i think this will do good then comes time to filming and i'm like i don't want to make any of this stuff because it's not fun for me i want to make stuff that's fun for me that's all the point of or else this becomes a job i'm not even making money off this people i haven't made a dime off this channel at all full transparency i'm not even monetized um, I haven't done one brand deal on this video. Everything I've got sent is for free. And yes, there's probably some subconscious bias in those videos. However, I try to like stay away from that. At least I'm like conscious of it. I'm conscious of my subconscious, if that makes any sense. I'm conscious of my inherent bias. Um, also, look at this stack of books right behind me. It's huge. It's falling over. So... I don't know where I was going with that, but I think I need to figure out what I want to do and make stuff I want and help you guys out. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Um, it's going to be slow. It's going to be painful, but it's going to be fun because the process of this is something I do enjoy. I don't want to be uh, making sort of videos that are tedious, that are a pain, uh, require tons of editing. Well, it's not even the editing part. I don't mind editing sometimes. But, like, I don't want to be making stuff just for the sake of getting clicks. I want to be making stuff that's, you know, I'm seeing... I get satisfaction of seeing other people, uh, like, feel better after watching my videos. If it's entertaining, if it's educational. I want to see them improve in some way. That gives me satisfaction knowing I helped someone out, made someone's day better, that sort of thing. In inherently, like, I get satisfaction of seeing other people get satisfaction um so i don't know what i'm gonna do I'm figuring out that's the whole point of this no one has their life figured out i'm gonna be figuring out what i want to do with this channel uh because it's still up in the air two years into this channel i think i don't even know when i started this channel tw january 2021 or something it's 2023 i'm still figuring it out and uh we're gonna go from there so without further ado i'm gonna stop watching my face bring it back here and uh, yeah, leave your comments down below, people, of what, what you think about the saturation of the tech YouTube space. I thought I got all my thoughts out in this video. I might have forgotten a thing here or there, but whatever. I got the majority of what I wanted to say out. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next video from uh, Tech with Scott. Like it if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. You can do what you want. Um, and peace out, everyone.